Kansas State. There's the snap. Back to throw is flying. Look right, wanted that, nothing there. And now he's going to take off and run to the left side. 35 to the 40. 45 first down midfield to the Kansas 45. And down to the 38 yard right. Tied in on the left. There's the snap to Collin. Wants to throw. Has plenty of time. No pressure. Fires deep for Lockett. Touchdown on the dive. Oh, I'm sorry there. My bad. Just, uh. Watching some highlights from this past weekend's game. Let me let me turn these off and we'll get started here. Oh, wait, we'll get that one in. <laughs> oh, darn it. Darn it. Just so helpless. Jayhawks, just so helpless, it almost seems. Okay. Hey, welcome, everybody. It's time to wrap up uh, the chemistry biology here, Unit 2. And we're going to wrap it up with our last lesson here, Lesson 4, which is going to be all about energy and enzymes. Uh, let's think back real quick and reflect on what we've learned so far throughout this unit. Lesson one being about atomic bonding and atomic structure. We checked out lesson two with water and all of its amazing features. And we looked at the building blocks of life, i.e. the macromolecules, uh, more recently in lesson three. Uh, we also talked about how we obtain those big four, the big four of carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So it's fitting, it's fitting that here in this final lesson of our unit, uh, it's going to encompass kind of all of those lessons that we looked at so far. Okay, we're building to this point to talk about energy and enzymes. Topics to be covered in this video include energy, what it is and what it looks like at the cellular level, chemical reactions, we're going to talk about, uh, describe them a little bit, talk about what they are and also diagram them, show them to you. Okay, and finally the third one is going to be enzymatic behavior. We're going to talk about those specialized proteins that are enzymes, uh, how they assist with chemical reactions, and how they really control a lot of what's going on at the cellular level. Being able to move or change matter is the definition of energy. Okay, so if you can do work on something, you're expelling, you're excreting energy. Energy is all around us, and if we could get into the advanced quantum sciences of physics, we'd be able to demonstrate how energy and matter are essentially one and the same. The type of energy you are always worried about, you're always worried about as a human, as an individual, is chemical energy, and chemical energy is found in food, okay? You're hungry. Your body is craving carbohydrates. It needs that cell fuel, and it also needs some lipids, and those things, carbs and lipids, are chalked full of chemical energy. The chemical energy exists within the bonds, the covalent bonds that are formed between a lot of those carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Other types of energy include thermal or heat energy, you can also call it radiation, uh, sound energy, light energy, electromagnetic energy or electrical energy, and nuclear energy, among many, many others. Similar to matter, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So, what happens to it? Well, energy is said to be transferred or transformed from one form to another. This process of energy being shifted or transferred from one form to another at the cellular level is often referred to as chemical reactions. Chemical reactions either create slash store or they release energy. So they either bring it in or they release energy at the cellular level. It's a simple process of breaking bonds between elements and potentially forming new ones that result in one or more new substance. So chemical reactions are either breaking bonds or creating bonds and forming new substances. <coughs> Excuse me. Those new substances are typically then compounds or molecules, which we've been really using those terms a lot in these past lessons. Chemical reactions are always said to start with reactants and finish with products. Similar to baking a cake, you start with ingredients, but in our field here, with chemistry of biology, we're going to call those reactants, and you finish with a product. The cake would be the final product. We finish with products. Since energy can be stored and created, or stored and released in chemical reactions, there's two ways to look at them. They can either be energy-releasing reactions or energy-absorbing reactions. And to take a look at that, let's head over to the board. Okay, so we're up here at the board and we're going to check out energy releasing and energy absorbing chemical reactions. So let's diagram a little bit. The best way to kind of understand the difference between these two chemical reactions is by checking them out on the graph. So the graphs that we have up here, we've got time kind of located here on our x-axis and we've got energy located here on the y-axis. Okay, so each graph, as I step back, you can see 
is going to start off the same. Uh, the left side here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have energy releasing, and on the right side, energy absorbing. And again, chemical reactions are essentially going from reactants to products. Reactants to products. All right? So let's go ahead and this energy releasing. Let's diagram this bad boy. So we start off with some reactants that possess a high amount of energy. I'm not sure what level, how much, but they've got a lot of energy. Okay? Typically, to make that reaction happen, you've got to put more energy into it. All right? To make the reactants react with each other to where we get the product, you may have to put more energy into it. Just like if you're baking a cake. You just don't mix up all the ingredients. You have to put it in the oven and ingest heat energy into it to turn it into your final product. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a little energy in here. We're going to demonstrate, we're going to graph this chemical reaction over time or as the reaction progresses. So we put in some heat energy, the energy level then increases, and all of a sudden, start over here, the energy's happening, and as it's releasing energy, it starts to go down over time, and then eventually it levels out. Okay? This leveling out would be where we have our products finally being created. All right? And we started up here at the top with our reactants. So reactants to products. Now the space between these two, energy levels, would be the energy released during the chemical reaction. So there are energy releasing chemical reactions where we start off with high energy containing reactants, ingest some energy into it, the chemical reaction takes place to generate the new products, it's releasing energy to the environment, and we're left with the product. Others that we can have start off with low energy, we put a lot of energy into it, and we are left with a product that has more energy than what it started with. That would be an energy absorbing chemical reaction. So we start somewhere down low. We inflict a bunch of energy into the chemical reaction. Chemical reaction occurs. And we've got our products. So our graph would look something like this. Where our products have been generated here. We started off with our reactants down here, and the space between products and reactants, this area right here, would be the energy absorbed. Okay. Now, there's one thing on this graph that we haven't really discussed yet. And it's these little humps right here. What is this energy called right here? That is not included in the final analysis or description of the products. Well, this is what we refer to as the activation energy. So right here, our activation energy would go from this peak of the graph to right where we started with the reactants. The activation energy would be this. And just like the two words in the term, activation energy refers to the amount of energy needed to activate or to begin the chemical reaction. Over here, starting from the reactants to where we have the highest amount of energy before products are formed, we go up to this peak and all the way down from here, and we've got a large, this would be a large, amount of activation energy. I'm just going to abbreviate there with ACT period, NEE period. Okay? So activation energy, the amount of energy that has been put into the reactants to finally initiate the chemical reaction to give us our products. Since there are thousands, thousands of chemical reactions happening in your cells throughout the day, there's a lot of energy that is being transferred nonstop. 
creating bonds, destroying bonds, creating bonds, destroying bonds. Some chemical reactions require low amounts of additional energy to make that chemical reaction occur, and others require loads of additional energy to make that chemical reaction occur. So, where does the help come from for those chemical reactions that require a lot of additional energy to make sure that we go from reactants to products? Enzymes. Enzymes are specialized proteins that assist with chemical reactions. Enzymes are commonly referred to as biological catalysts because they help carry out many, many life-sustaining chemical reactions at the cellular level that require a lot of additional activation energy or that have a high activation energy. Enzymes work by increasing the speed of chemical reactions. Typically, that speed is increased by reducing the activation energy for that chemical reaction. Let's head back to the board and take another look at these energy-releasing or energy-absorbing graphs with the assistance of enzymes. All right, so we stated that enzymes assist in biological chemical reactions at the cellular level by, by speeding up the chemical reaction and typically lowering the activation energy. So we've got our two graphs up here again, and let's take a look at that. Okay, so in an energy-releasing chemical reaction, if this was enzyme-assisted, your graph would look more something like this orange line here. Okay? where you can see that the activation energy is much lower and that the rate at which it finally created the products right about here is much less in terms of time. Created the products right about there, created the products right about there. So the energy was released faster. It didn't require as much to actually carry out the chemical reaction and we got to our product in a shorter amount of time. If this reaction was enzyme assisted, we would never have to get to this high of an activation energy. We'd still have to put a lot of energy in but it look more like that, okay? To where we get there a little faster, products have been formed, we never had to put that much more additional activation energy into it, and it happened in a lesser amount of time. Where the products were formed originally right here, so it took that much time, where the products were formed here, it took that much time, okay? If you're still having trouble understanding these graphs, make sure you come and talk to me during class um, but also check through the lesson four, um, section four of chapter two in your textbook because it does a good job of showing the graphs and also describing them. Okay, so everything that's kind of talked about in that section is kind of what is up here. Uh, so you're having trouble understanding activation energy, um, energy releasing reactions, energy absorbing reactions, and enzymatic behavior as we depict it, as we show it on a graph. Uh, make sure you come and talk to me. We'll try to get that sorted out. There are a few other terms we need to hammer down about enzymes, i.e. active site and substrates. Substrates are the substances that enzymes interact with and do work on. Okay? Substrates are enzyme-specific and enzymes are substrate-specific, as, as there are certain enzymes that do this and certain enzymes that do that. So uh, substrates could also be seen as reactants as they're going to be assisted by the enzyme in their chemical reaction. Okay, uh, So they're enzyme-specific, where one enzyme is not going to bond with a certain substrate. It's only going to bond with a specific substrate. Okay, And some substrate isn't going to go to a different enzyme. It's going to go to the one that it's meant to be with. Okay, um, The active site is the actual area on the enzyme where work is being done, so where the chemical reaction is taking place. Um, this is kind of like a keyhole uh, or a lock and key analogy here on the enzyme to where only enzyme-specific substrates can fit into the keyhole and therefore allow the enzyme to assist it with its chemical reaction. Uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff at the cellular level, how there are so many enzyme-specific substrates and um, uh, substrate-specific enzymes, okay? however you want to word it there. Similar to how certain factors may um, affect your performance on a Friday night or a Tuesday night with volleyball or football or cross country, okay, or on a Saturday on a football field like the Kansas K State game, mm, uh, different factors. Okay, you just bad, okay. Uh, but similar to how there are certain factors that could affect your performance, like rain or energy levels or attitude, lots of different factors that can affect how well you do. Okay, uh, there are also some certain factors that can uh, affect enzymatic behavior. Enzymes perform best in certain temperature ranges, 
and also best at certain pH levels. Your lab that you're going to do with this lesson and the lab that you're going to complete is going to give you a look into those special properties of enzymes and how, how they perform best within a certain range of temperatures, pH levels, and some additional other factors. So that does it for this video, okay? That does it for Unit 2. Um, make sure that you've got your guided note sheet filled out that goes along with Lesson 4 here. Please read through the Enzyme Lab prior to coming to class next time so we can knock that thing out in class and have some time to review for our Unit 2 exam, which is, which is quickly approaching, okay? As always, if you have any questions, by all means, ask. Hopefully you took notes down while you're watching this video so you can pull from the notes to fill out the guided note sheet and pull additional questions from the notes to make sure that you understand what we're trying to learn here with Lesson 4. Leave you with a few more highlights. Uh, so we'll just take it out from here. See you guys next time. Oh, ho, ho. Burn. Don't worry, KU fans. It's, it's always basketball season, right? It's coming up quick. Taking candy from a baby.